What's up everybody, Trent Smith here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I launch and retrieve my boat solo. And there's a couple different reasons why I'm making this video. One is because you guys showed interest in it, and another is because a lot of times they're just people who are taking too long in my way, <laughs> and I get a little aggravated. But there are some easy things that you can think about to make your next launching and retrieving of your boat easier. The first thing I do when arriving at the boat ramp, I park somewhere out of the way in a parking spot where I'm not blocking other people when I'm prepping my boat and things like that. Then I take a stroll down to the ramp and inspect where I'm going to be launching the boat at. There's a few different things that I'm looking at, like the depth of the water, how steep is the ramp, how much ramp I have so that my trailer doesn't fall off the back of the ramp. That can be important. Today we're at a very shallow ramp at Lake Seminole. This is shallower than I like or than I'm used to, so it's gonna be a little different, but that's okay. We know that now, we can plan for it. Then I like to take a gauge of the wind and the water. It's pretty calm in here, although we do have a decent breeze, five mile an hour or so coming this direction. And we also have this pretty nice floating dock to tie up to. There's a few different ways that I could get my boat to the dock, but really I just wanna come up with a game plan so I know which side to put my fenders on. But the main factors you want to pay attention to when planning how you're going to handle this is the wind, the waves, of course, other boat traffic, current, and anything else? That's probably it. There might be something else important, but that's good enough. So now I know that as I approach the dock, I'm going to have the dock on the left side of the boat, so it'll be a port side tie. So that's which side I will go ahead and prep my fenders on. Now that we have our game plan together, the next step is to prep the boat for the water. And notice, I'm not in the way, I'm in a parking spot. You don't always have to be in a parking spot, but just be sure that you're not blocking an actual road you know, where people are trying to launch and retrieve their boats. Sometimes you can get to the side of the road or a little bit in the grass, just, just, just be sure out of the way. I'm also going to get my dock lines prepared. And I already know how my boat's going to be tied up once I launch, so I know which side to put the dock lines on. Before I get out of the boat though, I'm going to go ahead, turn my batteries on, hit the primer bulb a little bit, come into the cabin, trim. I'm going to go ahead and trim it down a little bit, not all the way though. Make sure she'll crank. She's good. Now I can hop out and get my bow line on. So I have my stern line on and it's just put on there just regularly, just tied around the cleat, untangled, ready to go. But my bow line I do a little differently and I'll show you why. Can you guys see how much I'm sweating? Holy smokes, it's hot out here. But I guess that's why the whole boat ramp is empty. It's a hot day in what is it? End of July, no it's August now. It's August, it's hot, nobody else is out here. So what I like to do, I'll go ahead and take my winch strap off but I'll leave my safety chain attached. And then I'll prep my bow line in a way that it will be holding my boat to the trailer so it doesn't launch as I'm backing in. And it's also gonna be ready for whenever I proceed to the dock to tie up. So what I've done here is I have my standing in or the permanent in that's gonna stay on my cleat. It's attached to the cleat that I wanna be using whenever I tie up to the dock. Then I've ran my dock line up to the front post of my trailer and up to my cleat on my bow. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. What's it? My truck only says 92. No, it's hot than that. We're gonna take a quick little break before we get out there because all this filming while I'm trying to launch takes a lot longer than it normally does when I'm just by myself, just ready to get in the water. So we're gonna take a little break, mix up some Element, a little bit of the new raspberry flavor. Big thanks to Element for sponsoring. If you don't know or haven't seen already, I drink this stuff every day. It's salt, magnesium, and potassium, and it's great if you're exercising, or even if you're not exercising, just to replenish your electrolytes. Maybe you drink caffeine, which did you guys know that that depletes your sodium and your electrolytes? A lot. Maybe you're exercising and sweating a lot. Maybe you're looking for a delicious and simple and healthy alternative to something that you're already drinking. Element is that. Oh, such good flavors. I actually consume quite a bit of it personally because I sweat a lot. I work out, I'm outside doing things in the sun, making videos, playing football with my boys, something. 
and I'm drinking Element or I'm drinking salt. I've even made up my own salt mixture because I know how important salt is to replenish. So it doesn't matter who you are. You could be an athlete, a mom, a dad, a teacher, anybody. You could benefit from drinking some Element. Oh, this air in this truck feels so good. I don't want to get out and film the rest of the video, but I have to. Right now, Element is offering a special deal for my viewers. If you go through my link, drinklmnt.com slash tripsmith, you can get a free eight sample pack with every order that you make. Fantastic deal. Good way to try all of their flavors. They have some really good flavors. Chocolate, oh, raspberry, lime, watermelon, orange. And I love having a genuinely good product sponsoring the channel. So get you some. All right, let's get out in the heat. Let's do it. Let's finish this. Finish this. At least for the fun part, we're about to put the boat in the water and you know work on our skills, come up to the dock and things like that. I enjoy that. Let's go. Something else to think about is backing your trailer. Some people struggle with it. If you have trouble, go to an empty parking lot and do some practice. Learn how to back that thing up. You'll see how we do on the first try. I usually do pretty well. I take pride in this because I used to work construction. I backed a lot of trailers into some tight spots. And also something to think about is if you're at a boat ramp that is two lanes wide, stay to one side so two people can launch or retrieve at the same time. And also me personally, I kind of have two different ways that I will launch the boat and I'm going to show you both of those. And one of those ways is much easier if I get my boat close to the dock, if there's one going down beside the ramp, like there is in this case. So I'm trying to get fairly close over there. All right, boat's floating maybe a little more than I wanted to. Pull her up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. First thing I'm going to do is come and disconnect my safety chain. Now I'm hopping on the boat. I'm going to crank her up. Okay, once the motor's cranked, I'm going to go and undo that dock line that's holding me to my trailer. And in this instance, I'm going to bring my dock line back to my cockpit so I can have access to both of them once I bring the boat alongside the dock in just a moment. Bring her off. Come on, baby. So now I should have a game plan about where I'm going so I can get to my dock really quick, or as quickly as possible, so I can get back to my truck and get out of everyone's way. And of course, I turned the wheel the wrong direction. So I'm trying to think what to talk to you guys. But we're okay, we're okay. Oh, we got to make this look good for the drone. Get my dock line secured. And once my lines are secured, I'm immediately going back to the truck and getting out of everyone's way. So that's the way that I do it under power. Now I'll show you how I might do it. Maybe it's windy or super crowded or just, I don't know. I just want to do it a different way. I will do this without even cranking the motor. It'll be nice and simple. But first, let's get her back on the trailer so we can really simulate this. Turn around. Right. Another thing that I do when I'm loading my boat back on the trailer solo is once I get the boat into position on the trailer, I'll actually leave the motor in gear. Before I do come up to the trailer, I make sure that I trim up a little bit so that my skeg isn't dragging and messing up anything on the motor. But then, once I get the boat into, into position, I'll just leave her in gear, then I'll come out and around with the boat still in gear, and I'll hook my safety chain, and I'll hook my winch as well. Be sure it's, oh, to move just a little bit. Center it up, tighten her up, and she's good to go. Now I can get back on board, shut her off, pull the truck out, Get out of everyone's way. So now we're gonna kill the engines for this next method. We're still gonna be a port side tie and we're gonna begin this method as if I had just backed the trailer into the water and jumped on the boat and grabbed my dock lines. Since we have this L dock here, we'll just walk the boat right out there and tie her up. A 
quick little tip for quick dock and boating etiquette is if you plan on being at the dock for much time at all, it's good to kind of take your lines, do them up, put them by your cleat to prevent a trip hazard. Something else I want to touch on when it comes to your boating experience, launching, retrieving, docking, whatever, that is dock lines. You want to have some good dock lines. Now I have a 22 foot boat and my dock lines are 25 foot in length. I would say that's the very minimum that I would want to go for my size boat. You don't want to be stuck with dock lines that are too short. You also want to be sure you're buying good quality dock lines. These are double braid lines. I really like them. They feel good. They tie good. They just, they handle well. And these I believe are going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. These are probably a little oversized in diameter for my boat but I like the feel. It's easier for me to cleat and uncleat. But if you have a smaller boat with smaller cleats, you may want a smaller line. Can you guys see me sweating? Good gracious, I'm sweating so bad. Ah. And be sure that your dock lines have an eye in one end, which makes it much easier to attach them to a cleat. These are important. Do not skimp on your dock lines, people. Oh man, it's so friggin' hot. <laughs> I'm soaking wet, man. So now that my boat is in the water, I'm gonna come up quickly, get my truck, park it, and I'm not gonna have anything else to load onto the boat. I'm gonna have all that done prior to me putting in the boat in the water. That way I'm not leaving my boat here at this pretty prime spot that other people may wanna be utilizing. I don't wanna be hauling coolers and bags and things from the parking lot out to the boat. The name of the game is to be quick and efficient. Get the boat in, get the truck out, and get gone. I know this may sound cliche and I hate saying cliche things, but not all launching and retrieving instances are the same. They're all different, right? And it is true. Me personally, most of the time when I launch my Sea Dory 22, I am solo. So that's an added difficulty. And then it's also a pilot house boat. So it's not like a center console or a bass boat or something where I can just come up to the bow and catch the dock or do things quickly. I have to be out of the boat to get to my bow and things like that. And those factors force me to have a plan. But no matter what boat you have, it's always good to have a plan. You don't want to be one of those boaters who are caught up on Instagram or YouTube on some video because you're out there, you know, looking like you really don't know what you're doing, maybe making a fool of yourself, maybe scratching up your boat, scratching up other people's boats, starting fights, arguments. So let's make the time at the boat ramp an easy time for everyone. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this quick little instructional video. I hope this helps you next time you're launching your boat. Maybe it gives you some ideas, some things to think on to make your time getting on the water a little bit easier, which will in turn make your day a little bit better. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and check out some of my other adventures. Take care, get out there, and God bless, and I'll see you all in the next one. Love ya.